Gonna get into cleaning up these tail lights. That's right, cheese graters. Everybody hates them. But, let me show you how to get them cleaned up. Take a look at the products we're going to use to do this. It's basically going to be about four steps to get this done. First, we're going to clean the surface off. Then we're going to clay the surface. Then we're going to move into using a polish on there, that, uh, that paint reconditioning cream. And we're going to get into putting a protectant on top of it when we're all done. So to clean it, I'm probably going to use these glass wipes. They're just easy to use. You could use the... Uh, Final inspection with a microfiber towel, that's fine. We'll get it cleaned off, the surface cleaned up. The next step, we'll be using that final inspection to lubricate the clay bar. So we're going to run over with the clay bar, get all the bonding contaminants off of there. A third step will be the, the D151. Get them all cleaned up and polished out. And the final step will be putting a wax on top of there. Now you could also use a quick detailer that has a wax in it. It's not as potent as uh, an actual spray wax. But when you go to clean the, the lights, or when you go to clay bar, I would not use this detailer to do that because it has wax in it. And, I mean, you could do it, but you really don't want the wax in there. Since you're going to be polishing it, it's kind of a waste to do it that way, so I'll just use this, uh, the final inspection. Alright, let's get cracking on this. Try to get a little D4 footage here. Grab one of these invisible glass wipes. These things are pretty nice because they're already saturated with the cleaner. So you can just wipe over the surface, loosen up the contaminants. Actually works good in these, it's got like a texture to it. Actually gets into that texture. Grab another fresh wipe. Just try to do little sections at a time. Try to get in to these little louvered areas. pretty clean so we're ready to move on to the clay bar got a fresh piece of clay got the final inspection Remember, you really don't have to push the clay down, you're just gliding over the surface to release the bonded contaminants. And you'll feel the difference as you're moving the clay across, it'll get smoother and easier to move the clay.
So look at that little section. It's just years of bonded contaminants stuck on there. So this is the advantage of using the clay. I can really, you know, form it to fit into where I need to get to. Just take the towel and remove the final inspection. Pretty nasty. It's real easy, guys. Just spritz some of that final inspection on there, run the clay over it, wipe it off. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of these louvers done, and I'll come back and we'll hit the rest of it. Got all the louvered areas clay barred. So now we can move on to the outside. I wouldn't clay bar up in here mainly because it's textured. It's probably not going to do much for you, anyways. No one really sees this either. So, I mean, unless you've got your hatch open a lot, you know, I mean, you can go ahead and do that if you really want to. It's personal preference. funny using this clay bar because sometimes it's just like sandpaper there's so much contamination on there So I always like to break this stuff into sections, you know, and that's kind of common with detailing. So I'm just going to focus on this area, then we'll move here, move here, and I'll get the side. So spritz a little lubricant on there. Just keep working across. finish up the rest of this and we'll come back and uh, get into that D151. All right, it's all clay barred. You know, it's actually kind of amazing. I don't know if it really shows up on the camera, but that clay bar does make a difference. So, get into the 151 here got a fresh towel you know always agitate your products you know some of these products they'll separate while they're sitting so don't forget to agitate them you know any liquid products a spray product anything you can mix up always agitate it So, I really just want to get into using the corner. So I'm going to put some product on here and start working it into each lens.
this is where you want to spend your time putting a decent amount of pressure on here you know and how much you do this it's really up to you you know work some product in there wipe wipe off the residue and uh, if you're not satisfied just keep going you know sometimes uh, it might take two or three applications of the product to really get the shine back and sometimes you just do it once and it looks pretty good so you can just move on to the next section got all the louvers done these haven't been done yet but got this row right here done so next thing I'm going to do is work this area around the louvers Real simple. Just keep working those spots. Make sure you got some product on there. And just remove the residue with your towel. All right, I'm gonna finish up the rest of this. Got the D151 finished up here. It's looking real good. I really like that stuff. It does a great job. All right, so we are pretty much ready to run over this with a spray wax, so. Let's hit it with the spray wax next. All right, I'm just gonna use the gold class because I feel like anything with Carnuba gives you a better look. And you could use a synthetic spray wax, you know, that's fine. I feel like the Carnuba gives a little bit better of a shine, so that's why I'm gonna use this stuff. So, got my two towels here. One to wipe, one to dry. So what I like to do is just kind of saturate the wipe towel. Try to work into the louvers there. This is one of those perfect applications for a spray wax. It's just way easier to get it in there, work it in these different nooks and crannies. And this stuff is pretty good. I mean, it it's so fast and easy to use.
So what do you guys think? Let me know down there in the comment section. Alright, so some of you are probably thinking like, yeah, well, the other tail light's still covered in dirt. So I'm actually going to wipe this one off with that glass cleaner. And I'll give you some footage of that. There they are. Wiped it off with the glass cleaner. It's funny running a towel over it with the glass cleaner because it's like grabbing the towel since it hasn't been clay barred. It's a lot harder to wipe it. But yeah, this glass cleaner is pretty awesome. It's very foamy. I'm gonna do this whole tail light. I'll show you the end result of that. See how much of this we can get off of here. Got the passenger side all finished up here. Turned out really good. Definitely got a lot of the black marks off of there. You know, it's not perfect. Could definitely, uh, there's some spots that could use some touch-up paint, probably make it a lot, make it look a lot better. But man, what a dramatic difference! Alright guys, so that's how you do it. So get out there and get your tail lights cleaned up. The one word of warning I'd have to say is uh, if you're a 93 Cobra owner, I'd be careful doing this because I believe the stripes are painted on. Um, I don't know if that 151 will pull them off of there. It is kind of powerful, so you might want to use something more like the Meguiar's White Wax, something that's a lot, uh, a lot more gentle. So, with less cutting power. So you might want to do a test spot or something like that, but pretty much all the other Mustang tail lights, not really gonna be an issue. All right guys, tell me what you think in the comments. Give me that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in another one.